Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the batch file item converter in Reaper. Now the batch file item converter will allow us to create and export our media items from inside Reaper to any file type we need. And in addition, we can use it to change file types from external files to be used in any other software. It doesn't have to come from Reaper or be used by Reaper. It can be treated like a standalone file converter. Let's check it out. So I have a project in front of me here, and to open up the batch file item converter, we go up here to the file menu and choose it down here. Or we can use the keyboard shortcut on PC it's Control Shift F, or on the Mac, it's Command Shift F. And if we choose it, it opens up the Batch File Item Converter dialog. And like I said, we could use this externally, completely separately from Reaper. For example, if we open up the Explorer on PC or the Finder on Mac, we could see right here I have a bunch of files on my hard drive. And if you notice, they're all different file types. So let's say I'm using a piece of software that requires a certain file type. We can convert all these files in here to that file type. We could select them, drag them in to this window, choose where we want the converted files to go, browse for it. We can open up the folder where we're going to convert the files to. We could name the files or leave the name blank and it'll keep the names of the original. Then we could choose the sample rate or channels. Let's keep them the same as the original source files. Let's choose WAVE and 24 bit. That's the file type we need. Then we could convert them right here. And we could see right over here on our hard drive all the files converted to WAV files and 24-bit. So like I said, we could use these files in a completely different piece of software, not necessarily coming from Reaper or going to Reaper as a completely external file converter, but we could also use it in Reaper. In this project, we have some media items, a kick and snare with different samples in each. Let's say we wanted to convert these media items to separate files, maybe cut them up by sample first. Let's select this, type D for dynamic split. We'll split it by the transients. So it cuts each sample into a separate media item. Let's do the same with the snare. And now we could export all these files outside of Reaper. Let's select all of them. Open up the batch file item converter and go over here to add and choose add selected media items. And they get added right here. Again, we can browse the folder we want to export them to. Open it up so you can see it. Give it a name. Now, if we give it one name, it's going to name all the files the same. So instead, we should use wildcards which will name our files based on certain variables. So we could use project information, like the project, title, author, and so on. Let's go down here to the media item information and choose item, and also choose the item number. So it'll export each media item as a separate file and name it based on the item and give it a unique number. And this time we'll choose a different sample rate, like 441. Make it stereo. Let's export them as CAF or CAF files, 24 bit. Now, if we convert all the files, they're exported over here based on the name of the item and a number different for each file. So each kick sample and snare sample. Are their own separate file. And we could do this 
with any media items inside Reaper. So let's try some other options. Let's change this to 48 and mono. Let's make this a wave file and 16 bit and convert it. And now it converts and exports the files at this sample rate and mono and 16 bit waves. So we can create any file type we want from the list right here mp3s and video and convert them to any folder on a hard drive now over here we can normalize our files so each file will be exactly the same volume so you could choose to normalize it to different targets let's choose peak or true peak and let's say we want to leave headroom of minus four for each sample type minus four and now if we convert it all these files peak at minus four db or we can make them as loud as we want we could set this to minus zero or my preference minus zero point three just leaving a bit of headroom but still making each sample as loud as possible convert them and now all the samples are normalized to be as loud as possible according to peak but we could also use woofs integrated which is frequency weighted to make sure the perceived loudness of each sample is the same let's set this to minus 14 luffs and now it's going to normalize each file to be exactly minus 14 luffs. And we could also, from here, add a brick wall limiter to our files. Let's say we're concerned they're going to clip. Turn this on. Use peak or true peak. And now it's going to brick wall limit each sample separately. So if we convert it now, all these files have brick wall limiting on them. Then we could also add effects to our samples. Right here, go to our effects chain. Let's say we want to add a compressor right here. We can compress all our samples or files. Maybe EQ them right here. And any EQ we add is going to be applied to any file we export in this case our drum samples just choose to use the effects and convert them now these files have those effects applied let's turn this off now if we use reverb or delay we should really add a tail to the end this way the samples or any media items we create don't cut off that reverb or delay. I tend to use about 4,000 or 5,000 milliseconds, which is four or five seconds. Then over here, we could dither or noise shape. Then down here, we could add new metadata. Just choose it and we could add title, description, artist, or whatever. That's going to be added to our files. As long as we choose this, and it'll show up in other applications where we use those files. And we could also choose just to preserve the original file metadata if possible. And we could also save all of this as a preset. Right here, let's save this one as 44.1 stereo 24 bit wave. And now, if it gets changed to something else, we could change it right back by loading that preset right here. And the presets we save here are the same presets that'll show up in the render dialog. Right over here, under options and format, is the same one we just saved, which now shows up over here. Same thing we save in this window under presets for options and format. Is also going to show up in the batch file item converter.
right over here. They share the same preset directory. So that's pretty much it. That's the batch file item converter in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Chicken lady loves life. Gee, I never took that literally. I never. No. <laughs>